You are listening to Level Up a Gaming Podcast, episode 57, Gaming Online and Adding Technology to Game Presentation. Today we talk about online gaming and using technology to add to your game presentation. We discuss tools that we use and some things to consider in the tools that you choose. We also discuss how to use your online tools to improve your in-person gaming as well. I'd also like to make a shout out to our listener Gary for posting a lot of great tools for generating ins and locations on our Facebook page. Those tools will be in the episode description, and we'll put a post up with them as well. Thank you, Gary. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me in person, he's a virtual virtuoso, Jared. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jared, how are you doing today? Ah, not bad, not bad. Still in town, so very happy about that, very pleased. How have you been? I'm, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Um, gearing up here, uh, by the time this comes out, it should be my uh, my brother's wedding, um, so I'll be... I'll be out of state, uh, enjoying warmer weather. Um, our state is actually starting to open some stuff back up as of today. I know, it's shocking, right? I know, it's, it's amazing. But uh, uh, I'm going to go into uh, to South Carolina, see how I like it for uh, for a couple of weeks. So we'll be doing some uh, some virtual game, which yep. is actually quite amazing because that, uh, that helps lead us right into our, our current subject. So what is our current subject? Um, the subject that we're talking about here today um, is gaming online or adding technology into game presentation. Mm. And I, we sort of talked about this last year in our quarantine episode. Um, and looking back on it, I was like, mm, I didn't really title that too appropriately because effectively what it, we talk about is how we kind of game online. Um, but I also wanted to kind of revisit the subject because I've done more gaming online with other groups that aren't just us. Right. And so I, I've had more exposure to different tools and it's, it's always interesting. We, we, we've always had one virtual player at our table, which is Bryant. He's lived out of state for the last 10 years now. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So a really long time. I remember when we first added him back into the table, um, how we incorporated him and got him back into the table. Well, he never really even left the table. I mean, like, shoot, the, when we found out he was moving, we moved it real quick to a virtual platform. No, he was he was gone for a little while. No. Yeah. No. Because I remember pulling the battle board in front of uh, in front of the Skype cameras and. Well, that was before we found some of the online tools. Yeah. yeah. So what what happened was our our, our friend by him. Went, went away to college um, after for his grad school with mm-hmm. his wife, and uh, they lived in Alabama. And we, uh, for probably, I, I want to say there was probably about a year or two that he actually didn't game with us. I call shenanigans. Uh, we can confirm with Brian, but I'm pretty sure. I will sure. Co- totally confirm with Brian. I'm pretty sure he didn't game with us for a little while. And then I remember we, we said, well, what if we got, you know, some tools put together so we could do gaming together and um you know so we can add you back in virtually and he was like he's like i'm down like let's do it because i remember he was gaming with a different group down there oh yeah he was and so that that was kind of our first foray into it about 10 years ago uh we started with we were using skype to bring brian in and then we we didn't have a very well thought out plan for this because we we always had a like a whiteboard. Yep, that was know, our that that we called our battle board. Yeah, the battle board. I mean that that's pretty typical at a D and D table. You're gonna have like a battle map or a battle board in case you got to yep. draw out a room or something. And we had that, and Brian would try to look at it through a camera, and it was not always the best of uh, of situations there. Yep. But uh, that that's kind of what led us to the Brian be like a little up to the left. Move my character a little. Your other left. <laughs> uh, that led us pretty quickly to go out and find an online tool that yep. worked. And that's when we discovered Roll20, mm-hmm. I think. I don't think we used any. I, I think we used for like a few weeks a 
some just online whiteboard tool for a few weeks. But we did really use an online out. whiteboard tool, and then you being the one who is – you're generally the big researcher with all this stuff because you were the GM. Mm-hmm. Um, you were yeah. the GM, capital T, capital G. <laughs> uh, capital M. <laughs> capital M. Uh, so you, you found us Roll20, and that's what we ended up using. A lot We've of, been using that for a minute now. I, I remember when I, we were I've small been, potatoes. I've been a member since 2015 on it. Oh man, I, I should go back and see when I became a member. And I mean, we've, we've played hundreds of hours. Oh, dude, I don't even want to look at my played hundreds of hours. Um, don't even want to look at it. <laughs> like, oh god. But to an extent, you know what? Like it, it, for me, it's not. I, I'm rather proud of how many hours I've played. Why? Because all of that. You know, it's it's funny. Uh, one of our our, our good friends, uh, uh, Dave. Um, you know he's a he's a uh, a brilliant brilliant person. Um, just had uh, his uh, first uh, son, and huge congratulations to him if he if he listens to our podcast. You're listening, Dave. Congratulations. Um, but you know, one time he 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 and his uh, uh, um, uh, wife were doing an experiment uh, with not ingesting so much media, but rather creating. You know, uh, how much are you? eating compared to how much you are building. Um, and it was actually those words that really inspired me a lot. So when I look at my roll 20 counter, I'm not, I'm not like, Oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not disappointed with it at all. I mean, you, you, we've been doing this every week and whatnot. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, we, we've done a lot with, yeah, it. we've done, we, we started when we started off roll 20 barely even had fog of war. I don't even think it had Fog of War when it started. When it started off, Roll20 was not a company. It was a... Free website. It was... Well, it, it was always free, but they did not have dedicated people doing support. They didn't have people yep. who were employees there. It was a bunch of people <clears throat> who were doing it effectively as a side job. And once they got enough support, yeah. they were able to uh, keep people on full-time and devote actual full-time staff. Now... I'm not going to say to anybody because I've used Fantasy Grounds in mm-hmm. another uh, campaign setting. I know people like Fantasy Grounds; a lot of people do. There's good things about Roll Twenty, and there's bad things about Roll Twenty. Yeah, and okay? there's good. There are so many. I mean, different ones coming out nowadays. You know, people are now competing in the market. Um, that really, I I won't like. I'm not going to sit here and say Roll20 is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, I've had my issues with it. Um, And there are so many platforms out there that I haven't explored. Actually, Aaron's explored more than than I have uh, when it comes to other systems. I guess you could say I'm a pro user when it it comes to Roll20, but I'm always looking for the next best thing. There, there's just a lot of things that we... we, we, Again, we're familiar with the tool, which is why we're talking Roll20. But... Really, the the biggest thing that I kind of wanted to get out of the online platform and what, what we ended up doing with it was that we were able to bring in our our player, somebody who we played with at our table forever, into this, this medium here. And what ended up happening was it was kind of a slow, gradual thing because it was Brian and then we had our own, um, then we had a shared account yep. for, for Roll20. And... So we had like the battle board sort of projected on Jared's on a TV, big TV, yeah. And uh, Brian had his own his own board, and then what ended up happening is it sort of matured into well, bring your laptop, set up in a set up a free yeah. account because the accounts are free, and I'll invite you to the game, and then you've got your own screen, and then we're not sharing that. We can see Brian's face because when we were using Skype, you couldn't really do picture in picture and get a nope. good a good feel for it. So we we sort of started adding more and more technology into the game, which is very interesting when you think about like, like, you know, Jared and I aren't, uh, you know, we're not co-located. We're, we're right here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the same spot. So, um, you know, the, when you think about when you started the hobby, everything was at a table, you know, in the basement, it's typically how most people start. Yep. Yep. But it was always at a table and, there we've just we've now added even into uh presentation like when brian comes into town 
Brian still brings his laptop. All three of us are on our own laptop looking at our own screen. We don't return back to no, we don't. the old way. We started adding technology into our presentation, and we've never stopped using the technology. No, we haven't. And point of fact, like, it's funny. I've <laughs> My wife uh, was one time looking for, you know, she was, just, I don't know, wanted to buy me something. I don't know. Just being nice. She was like, hey, Jared, look at these really cool dice. Don't you want some dice? It was some random freaking day. And I was like, baby, I haven't rolled dice in forever. <laughs> like, we just used the built-in online roller. We just used the, 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 the dice roller. Um, you know, and it was really sweet of her. But, like, I, I, I haven't rolled dice. I've got bags of dice. Um, the you know, aside from that, though, is we sort of switched to the full online dice roller. Not, one, not only one, because it was convenient. And it displays everybody's dice rolls in the chat window. It um, prevents but cheating. Two, uh, we had some cheaters at our table, yeah. and uh, we had to do it to prevent cheating. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Um, you know, especially when uh, uh, we invited some other people in, and, and and they they were cheating. So the dice roller works out great. Um, you know, and it, it <laughs> so your cheater has a really really hard time. <laughs> Um, unless they're like you know a hacker or something like that, and then they can. Yeah, whenever you're doing it, don't. If if you're gonna if you're gonna use something that that displays dice rolls, like if you Fantasy Ground has a dice roller, uh, roll twenty, you could roll macros to do a dice roller, or you can click on dice. Same same sort of way to do dice rolling. Tr- encourage and make sure people roll yeah in those in those mediums they they're they're gonna trust me the the cheater is gonna say like i don't like the dice roll there's nothing wrong. who cares your brother's your brother's like why i like rolling my own dice i got my own dice no, roller no, over yeah, here no, like no. yeah sure you do <laughs> no. you got to put it up on the screen there big dog so but but on to technology so the 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 first thing is is to find a platform um typically you want to find a platform uh, now, Aaron and I both use, um, uh, we actually use two different platforms to virtually interact with Brian. Uh, we use Roll20 for really the board. And then for communications, we actually use Zoom. And if you're wondering, you can use the free platform Skype and Google Hangouts. I use Google Hangouts in my other group. The problem with Skype and Google Hangouts is that Skype and Google Hangouts being free tend to have more lag and latency they do in the video Un- unfortunately that's that's the nature of of the world <laughs> you got to pay money to get service um free stuff is always going to have problems um but you know if that's what your if that's what your wallet affords just be okay with that and you know and if if somebody's like it's always lagging cool you hand me the 20 bucks or 40 bucks or 50 or 60 bucks a month it costs for this thing yeah i mean uh, lagging is better than having to set up 40 minute meetings and every 40 minutes the game drops so you have yeah. to re-enter a 40 minute meeting to do something with zoom again if your wallet does afford that allows you to have to, to purchase the tool i would highly suggest that you purchase uh, a paid uh you know online tool like zoom um i bought zoom for my personal use during the pandemic and it, it did end up just, it, it worked out great for, for game. It, it's, it's just very easy to use. It's, it's intuitively very simple. There's other ones like WebEx and things like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, again, I, I, if you do have the money for it, I would advise, you know, just get a year subscription to it. Uh, if you've got a good gaming table, have everyone chip in 20 bucks, say like, hey, this is, this is to improve our online gaming. Yep. And, and there you go. Um, so, you know, some of them have built in. I don't know if Fantasy Grounds has built in audio visual. Roll Twenty does. Uh, Roll Twenty does have integrated audio visual on it. Um, we obviously have never used it, nope. but um, I've seen what it's supposed to look like, um, and it seems pretty. It's solid. It's, it's it seems pretty solid. It seems like a, a fairly straightforward. I mean, it's it's part of what you pay for with the experience. There, it's one of the, the things that I'm sure they've they fine tuned with it. Um, uh, Fantasy Grounds, I don't know. If they have it or not. Hmm. Well, so you'll have some systems that'll have integrated audio and visual. You'll have some systems that you'll have to use a different communications platform uh, from your actual virtual table. 
So one of the things with technology, though, that, that you know, microphones are, are a big thing. You need to figure out your audio um, because, trust me, there's nothing. The reason that Aaron and I actually don't typically use the Roll20 uh, platform for uh, audio visual is because we're both in a room with Brian uh, being uh, out of state. And if we both turned on our, our laptops and our laptop microphones and all that stuff, we are we going to get, we the, get the feedback loop, the feedback loop. And it really hurts. And it's very painful. Now you could always say that, well, if you and Aaron put on gaming headsets, I don't want to be sitting in a room across from my friend, you wearing a gaming headset, talk to him. That's just me. Yeah. What we end up doing is, um, we typically hook up, I, th- this can be done in multiple different ways. I mean, again, because I'm trying to give you different flavors for mm-hmm. how you can kind of do this. So our ours is that we have a single computer responsible for the... the, the an old virus-laden computer. An old virus-laden computer, but Jared's got it, he's supplying it, and uh, he's, he's, a, he's a saint for it. So Well, it's going to get switched out soon, so... But... Um, the, the computer does have, have a uh, – we're going to try to upgrade the technology, effectively use the, the same um, you know, soundboard here that we have for the podcast yep. to, to do the, the, the audio through there because then we each have a mic and we can sound better to Brian. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have just a single microphone basically on a boom, and mm-hmm. it just points at us. and we, It's not even a boom. It's a mic stand. Oh, it's just a regular mic stand, yeah. But it, it, it's, it's – you know, it, it, it has always worked out for us. The only times that it, it falls apart is when you're trying to do a low, gravelly voice. When you're doing this, Brian cannot hear us. So when you're trying to put impact, which is one of the things that you lose yeah. in uh, in online gaming, or it's, it's hard to... I'm not saying you lose it. You just have to be patient with it. Because if you are dealing with something that could lag on you, you might have to repeat it. Yep. And so the emphasis on what you're trying to... to to give to your players uh you know you're you're just trying not to lose it there you you they will get it and also if you do have a bunch of people located in a room and you've got some online players you have to be very very cognizant as the gm that your online players um are probably just slightly lagged behind you by maybe a couple seconds Mm -hmm. and you have to give them the opportunity to jump into the scene yeah, so you got to be have a little bit of patience and make sure that it's not lag that's causing your player not to respond to a situation quickly. So, like, when we've talked about using timers and stopwatches and stuff like that uh, in, in our time episode, um, or even in, like, sharing for mass combats, uh, that's not really as effective. You just have to be more patient. It's technology. Technology has its limits. Um, I mean, I'm sure if we're every gaming table is a multi-million dollar corporation, we could have the best of the best, but... Like, sorry, most of us are working out, you know, they're doing this out of our living rooms. So, although actually uh, <laughs> there was a, a gaming group in, at, at, at one of the locations uh, where I worked, um, one of our, our uh, states, they had enough people to where they gamed. So they asked the manager and they, the manager let them use the conference room that had built-in video conferencing stuff for, oh, for games. Awesome. It was fantastic. I, I loved that story. I was like, that's awesome. Like, my my work has a fantastic video conferencing system that I'm like, we could totally do that on Saturday nights. They'd let me. They'd let me. They love me. They let me. <laughs> They'd be like, just don't break anything. Um, so... But back to um, uh, technology. So audio is important. Visual is important. Uh, remember when doing visual, you always have to kind of look at your lighting. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons that I really, it, it, it bugs me that like my, my face is like bluely eliminated by the Roll20 because it's, it's coming off the computer screen. Now, I know there's there's about a million YouTubers out there that are like, get the ring light. Okay, fine. All right. Next paycheck. You know, when I'm not paying for other things that I need to, I don't know, live. But I, I guess what Aaron and I are, are kind of boiling up to is is technology and inclusion of technology into your game is a slow process. We didn't do it overnight. We didn't go from having a, uh, you know, a, a virtual platform to mics, sound, light, 
knowing this, knowing that overnight. It is a very slow learning process that you are going to have to be patient with. And your players have to be patient with it. Because, uh, unfortunately, that's just the name of the game, is patience. Because with technology comes cost. You know, I, I can tell you our, our gaming setup now is is much, 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 much more expensive than when we started at a table where literally the most gaming expenses we had were books, dice, and notebooks. You know, that, that was it. I mean, also back then, I thought a role-playing book was super mondo expensive, but, you know, that's what... You... It's what a kid who, you know, has, you know... A little little side job mowing lawns or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is mondo expensive. When... Yeah, it is mondo expensive. How many of those lawns did you have to? <laughs> I ask. Um, uh, actually, I didn't. I didn't mow lawns. What did I do for money? I got a job pretty early when I was a kid. Yeah, I think we all did. I think we started working at like sixteen. I worked. At, started working at fifteen. I was a waiter. Yeah, but too, at the retirement home. It's too late for that. It's too late for that now. I had this. So for our listeners, I was fifteen years old. I was a guy asked for uh, hot tea with sugar at the end of his meal. So I brought him his meal. I didn't remember the sugar for the hot tea. I brought him his tea at the end of the meal. I didn't bring him his sugar. And like, I don't know, five, ten minutes after after I was supposed to bring the sugar, I brought the sugar and I said, I'm so sorry, I forgot your sugar. And he looks at me, the most serious look on his face, and just goes, it's too late for that now. I was like, holy crap. Did somebody die? Like, it was the most. It, it, he had the look and the tone in his voice like somebody got murked because of this. But either way, um, technology will come uh, slowly and you'll build it over time. Um, I do want to kind of focus on some some points of, now that we're kind of like halfway through the episode, I do want to focus on some points about gaming with technology and storytelling with technology. Um, so... Rule number one. Learn your tools. Learn your tools. That, that, sorry, I have to say that as rule number one because um, I game with the guys who do Fantasy Grounds. The GM doesn't really know how to use Fantasy Grounds. And there is a ruler feature in Fantasy Grounds that we just found out about yet last week. And, oh, my God, that could have changed everything. <laughs> Learn your tools at least know how to do the basics okay and, and i mean it's really not that hard to do i mean like seriously if you take one day to and i'm just gonna say to fuck around on a, on a system i mean okay and, and, and trust me i'm gonna get into, into the dutch philosophy of homo ludens and, and yada yada but i'm gonna skip all that and i'm not gonna bore everybody with 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 that um play play with the system get on it one night Build a game that you have no intent of showing your friends. Move around the characters. Find out how to know the system better than your players do. because And just know everything it is about it. Take one or two days. Like, the, the if you game on, on, on Friday, right? After the night on Friday, take Saturday and Sunday to do. You're not writing the story. You're not doing that. You're fucking around on the system and learning how it works. Why? Because it will make... Hopefully you've already got enough story to last you to next week. Yeah, you're going to set, and you might say, well, this is a sacrifice of my maintenance period. Okay, an hour-long maintenance does not equal, and this can be considered maintenance because it is working towards a goal of making your uh, ex- the player experience more fluid. Again, it's, it's really important because, again, you're now relying on the, those tools to give a map. You're relying on those tools to, to to draw, to move players around, to have tokens be placed on the map. Understanding how the tool works is the key to that. Okay, you can't have a good battle map if you don't know how to put the battle map on there. If you don't know how to draw a battle map. If you don't know how to draw the battle map. You don't. You, if you don't have have good fluid use of of the tool when you're trying to represent. So, like, roll twenty has a ping feature. Okay? Yep. I have gamed on Roll20 with another GM who didn't know that it had a ping feature, okay? And so instead they just drew on the map. And I was just, it, it, it I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's not, not the end of the world. Like, it, it's not breaking too much immersion because the maps were just kind of there to represent a little bit of 
little bit of actual realism, but it, it, it's just when I look at what 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 we've done with Roll Twenty, and again mm -hmm. we've used it for ten years. Yeah, um, it's just like if you're going to use the medium, just kind of have some understanding of how to use the medium. Yeah, and then we're not talking advanced because like now I can do dynamic lighting. I can actually do it pretty quick. I've I've done one very very recently with dynamic lighting. Um, I'm not saying that, but like there's a journal tool in, in Roll20 that allows you to put NPCs, locations, characters, and you can do folders and you can do all these sorts of things. You can show them to players. You can take and, you know, you can edit and put notes on there and blah, blah, blah. Know how to use that. You know, like that, these are basic tools of the, of the, of the platform. Know how to use them. Um, Sorry, I derailed you on your... your you did. Rules. That that, But that is a go good rule, number one, is know, know your platform, know all the functions, even before you purchase and buy it or whatever. Um, know it. Uh, I guess rule number two uh, would be um, uh, if it's not in the platform, it's, it's, it's not there. Um, this is a special to Roll20 for, for our gaming system, so to speak, because I'm not sure if Fanny Grounds does have a journal thing does it can you see npcs in there i think so okay well roll 20 has a very advanced journal system where you can put npcs and locations and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. anything that you can think of right if you're like hey you know, I've been thinking about this map and blah, blah, blah. And I've got my maps all aligned. Like I can, I can build maps for hours on my, on my laptop. I can, I, I love doing that kind of stuff. It, it's, it's a hobby for me, but unless it's in roll 20 ready for my players to actually use, it ain't nothing because it's still sitting in my laptop ready to go. You know, it, it's, it's, <laughs> bad example but uh it, it's the difference between a pistol and a holster and a pistol drawn which one's actually ready to fire <laughs> you know um if you for example like me uh and we we've talked about this uh, a couple episodes ago uh i use google drive um to do all my writing and, and all my notes and all my npcs before i put it into roll 20 the reason i do that is because roll 20 is not accessible from an aircraft uh, it's not accessible from my phone uh, you know, and I, I travel a great deal. Um, so what I do is I put everything in, in Google Drive uh, and in a Google Doc, and then I port it over into Roll20. And until it's ported over into Roll20, I don't consider it done. It's not checked on the box yet. And you, you have to do that. You have to make sure that you get that in, that you check the box, that, okay, this NPC is fully uploaded and yada, yada. Now, there are some things that you will um, encounter. Uh, I, and this is not a rule. It's, it's, it's more of an observation. So when we started off with Roll20, Roll20 has a really great feature of, of putting character pictures. Great feature. Love it. We have moved into this kind of fantasy world with our detective series where, uh, you know, orcs walk among us. Um hidden but they walk among us uh one of them might have you know a uh lip piercing let's say it's hard to find a picture of an orc with the lip piercing it's hard to find a picture of an orc who wears dark rim sunglasses and a fedora now you might say well i've seen that picture yes you've seen that picture once but what if you can't find it again what if you need, what if you have two orcs, two different orcs with lip piercings? Uh-oh. You've seen one picture. Uh, I encountered this one. So we did a large dwarf game, right? And you might think it's, oh man, this, that's easy. I'm D&D. I'm, I'm &D. There's enough artwork out there where, trust me, I got this. Yeah, you think it's easy. So I, I made this game. Uh, it was set in a dwarven town. It was the murder of a king. Um yeah, it seems easy when all your dwarves are male. You know how many photographs there aren't of dwarven females? Yeah, that answer is a lot of missing photographs. Um, people, they, they love to draw their male dwarven characters. Unfortunately, they don't draw their female dwarven characters because they don't have female dwarven characters. I don't know, but it's a huge problem. So 
I have spent and wasted many hours going and looking for these photographs or trying to use Photoshop to manipulate them, and then I realized something very large. I don't have to have them. I don't. You don't either. And I guess what the, what the truest point of this story is, is just because there's a functionality that's there doesn't mean you have to use the freaking thing. Like, Roll20 has that great picture app. It, it's fantastic. I don't have to use it. There is no one who's my, I, I, and I, and I, to address concerns, I was concerned that my players were thinking that I was getting lazy. Oh, Jared's not putting pictures in anymore. I discussed with them ahead of time. I told them the situation. I said, guys, listen, I'm spending hours with that. I could be working on story instead looking for stupid pictures that are very hard to find and never meet my needs. They never meet my needs. Never. Because you know what? I find the, the orc with the lip ring, and they're really green. I was going for more of the bluish green orc, not the green orc, but the bluish green. That's just not the right green for me. Mm-mm. So I'm never satisfied. So I told my players ahead of time, I said, hey, guys, you know, I'm really having trouble finding these these pictures, and I think I'm just going to stop using the, the the picture thing. And it has worked out wonderfully well. Basically, just use the pictures when I want to use them. I mean, I know that sometimes that bothers you. But. Oh, that bothers me because, I'm, you know, the OCD in me says either you have pictures or you don't. <laughs> there is no middle. So, um, you know, for me, excuse me, um, for me, uh, it, it really, I, I, you don't have to use all the tools that are are there. Just because Roll20 has dynamic lighting doesn't mean you have to use it. Does it increase your story? Does it increase the mood for your players? Does it do what you need it to do? If you want that orc to be slightly bluish, write it in there. Description. Boom. Use the theater of the mind. Use the mind's eye. It's what we all started with before. You know, well, some of us who are talented freaking artists, you know, they, they, they might have been drawing, but God bless them. I, I envy and hate you because I envy you because I've always wanted to draw NPCs, but anyone who's ever met me knows that my stick figures good, are rough. Good, dis- good descriptions work just as well, though. They do. It's just... it's Spending time on your description. Yeah, because even if you give somebody the picture, guess what? You're probably going to give them a description of who the person is. Oh, well, that's just me. Is you, but you know it's it's probably not a, it's probably not a bad idea to give a description. But no, no it, Jared's right. If if the tool doesn't exist, you know you're not gonna shoehorn it in. There's there there's some ways to get around it. Um, probably our biggest. So we love putting music into our games. Love it. Okay, love it. I I think it's if you have never done it as a GM, uh, our music and atmosphere episode isn't amazing or anything like that uh but we we should probably actually redo that episode or, or, or talk about it more um but i have a pretty hard rule about it which is every time a scene changes the music should change with it and it's actually a really great rule i've used it um and basically just put your music on repeat have it be background music um i prefer no vocals in it just something to be underneath uh the the scene Okay, and it's just like now, like you've immersed yourself in a movie. Everything that you do now to to describe something changes as the movie goes scene to scene to scene. And if you're wondering where can I find this kind of background music, uh, believe it or not, YouTube has loads of it. Um, you can get a free YouTube download, or I've got a free YouTube download that yeah, I yeah, YouTube is, that has tons of it. Um, if you play any video games, things like that, there's a bunch of places where you probably heard something. You're like, this is a great background song. Or like you're watching The Crown the other day and they're doing the synthesizer thing but with the cello and you're like, this is really cool. I want to find the crown's this. Crown's freaking amazing. I know. I was just literally watching it the other day and they were doing the... And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I need to find this. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, but, so, yeah, music um, is, is is key. Make, you know, I, I like making sure that it's in, in, in the thing. Um and, and Aaron's got a great rule of the music changes as the scene changes, period. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're moving from one scene that's dialogue and narrative to another scene that's dialogue and narrative. It doesn't matter. 
you know, it doesn't have to be a wide change. It's just it subconsciously, trust me, your players are getting a little annoyed you're, with hearing the your, same. Your music. players will notice it if you're doing that. And again, this is I'm now way off topic here, but it, again, it it does because. I'm actually going to hold the point. We'll talk about it in another music You're episode. You're going to hold that point? Whoa. I am going to hold the point. Um, but my point about the music player is that we love music, and Roll20 originally had itself hooked up with Jukebox, which was connected with um, SoundCloud. Yeah. And um, we had a whole music library up there. And then they got rid of their support because I think SoundCloud went out of business mm-hmm. or whatever the company was went out of business, and it just shut down. Um, so Roll20 instead built their own music player into it, which thank God they did that. But there are other solutions, like you could use Discord to share and play music through Discord. Find a way to do it. If yep. you don't have music, um, I would highly suggest to incorporate that into your technological online gaming stuff. It makes a huge difference. And we'll, we'll talk about that actually in the music episode and as to why it makes a difference in the music episode. But um, but again, the, the point was that, that, that tools may or may not exist. Find ways to, to get the tools that you want to exist. Get creative. And I mean, like, honestly, just because it's a Frankenstein of different technologies you're using doesn't mean that it's bad. Does it, does it create the effect that you want? That's in the end, you know, that jury rigging anything. Does it create the effect that you want to the quality that you want? There you go. That's a great rule, you know? Yes, yes. And so, again, you string together the technology you want and just make sure that you know how they all work together, okay? That's that's the, the point. You if, you if you've never tried it before and you're experimenting on game night, guess what? I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably not going to go as well as you yeah, Never experiment on game um, night. Especially when you're on an online game because it, it's – it's one thing if you have players in the room, you're like, all right, guys, 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 settle down, okay? But if you don't have the players in the room, they're online, it is so easy to lose people. Somebody's sitting there yeah. on their phone, you can't see that while they're there. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough engaging with them, having the way to – this is another reason why I would highly suggest getting Zoom or something like that, is that the faces can actually sit on the screen when you're – when your your Doing main stuff. screen is, is is up there, when you've minified it, you can see the minified faces. it. Yep, minimized it. I'm I'm now conflating developer terms and. Like, oh, this is a developer term. Yeah, minifying a file is compacting it all into a single line. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, not a developer. Yeah, sorry, minimized. There you go. Um, when you minimize, when you minimize it, you still can see the person in the upper right hand corner mm-hmm. of the screen. Or if you are the GM, have two, have two screens or something. Two screens is awesome. Two screens is useful because then you can see the players and then you have an eye on their reactions because it's really, really important if you're the GM to be able to see how your players are reacting. Yeah, you're gonna have some people that are like, uh, I don't, I don't really do the web camera thing, and it's like, uh, I kind of need you to because trust me, as a storyteller, uh, uh, they say a picture you know, makes a thousand words or whatever that, that, that phrase is. You don't see a person's reaction. I can they, look up any book. They, they tell you 90% of communications like is, is nonverbal, you know? It's, yeah. Again, you need, you need to have some sort of feedback from them to be able to understand how they're, how they're doing. Yeah. Do I need to increase tempo? Do I need to decrease tempo? Do I need to throw action in right the hell now? Because if you're just hearing our voice and I'm saying, yeah, no, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and search that barn. You don't see that my face is bored out of my mind, mainly because this is a podcast. Um, but, but this it, is a good it, example it, of it. It sounds like it. It sounds like, okay, he's going to search the, the barn. That's, that's what I want him to do. You don't see that his face is like, oh, my God, make it stop. But, yeah, I mean, I, I guess uh, what, what I'm trying to say is, is use – the technologies that, that, that you, you have, that, that'd be my rule number three, is, is you know, find technologies that, that fit the system that you need to, yes. to work with. Um, because, again, I'm not saying that there's a replacement for sitting down at a table no. and gaming with everybody at the table. When Brian is in town, it right. is always better to have him here yeah. than away even though we use the technology of the laptops so we all have our own battle board and you've got yours which is effectively the gm screen 
but now Brian can hear us. We we get rid of one of the the problems that we have with the online gaming is that is that voice is now trans transferring correctly. Yes, and you can feel his energy there in the room. So it's kind of like like when when he when he laughs when he's bored when he's tired you kind of get the sense of how he's he's doing yep. in the room. Nothing that, ever beats being at the table together. Yes, nothing ever beats being at the table together. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to to get rid of the barriers when you're doing the online gaming, and that's 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 what's important about finding the tools that work for you. See, like all you would hear is the you wouldn't see that Jared is so sleepy. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, 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 it just it is it is a harder medium to work with, but I assure you that if you if you practice with the technologies, you adapt your players to it. It's very possible to bring in uh, co-located groups, colo you know, co-locate everybody, you know, at the table, and you can you can definitely do online gaming. I know that, that it, it's it's become more of a necessity, yeah, in, in this day right now, but. I also say, you know, you can certainly use it beyond this point in time and make it a good experience for everybody at the table. So, like, if you are gaming with, let's say you, you pick up, you did a pickup group, and now you're part of a group of people that you've been gaming with through uh, through COVID or something mm-hmm. like that online. And when it's all said and done, like, people are going to start going back to their gaming table. Like, no, no, keep doing the online gaming. Yeah. It's, it's something that is completely feasible and doable or you know merge some tables work it out you can do that with your online tools absolutely so you know don't don't be afraid of of incorporating that um you know and don't be afraid of you know if you've invested the time and technology to get that online group up and running you know it's not it's not it's it's totally worth it to add uh you know a a 20 dollar mic stand with a mic on it and uh in a in a, a a big camera to kind of view everybody in the room mm-hmm. now, now now you've got two tables like like a video conferencing room how cool is that and then it's, it's just very cool i, I think that the, that's one of my favorite things about incorporating the technology and even when you don't have it when everybody's in the same place the technology is great for like i'm gonna put the battle map up on the tv yep okay now we all see the battle board and maybe you all have uh you know your your laptops or tablets so you can move around on the battle board but you kind of see it all the gm's there it's just there to kind of have you interact Mm -hmm. with the with the board itself instead of having you move around and mess around with your miniatures and then you knock over steve soda i don't do miniatures (laughs) i don't have the hand to paint but i mean you know it do do what works for you but i i think that that we've always I think our gaming has become equally, if not more, enjoyable. Yes. Uh, by incorporating some of these things, just to kind of make uh, mapping easier and, and you know space constraints. And like I said, you're not knocking over Steve's soda when I'm moving my piece. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Jared. Do you have anything else? You want nope, to add? that's it for me. Um, so, anyways, yeah. Th- th- thanks for listening to uh, to us talk about online gaming again. I, again, I feel like it, it, it's something that we should bring up again, given just the 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 nature of, of, of you know how the world is at the moment. And you know, I'm sure a lot of people are doing it and, and are looking for more tools, with technologies. If you are using some tools that you're like, this is a really great tool um, for online gaming. Let us know. This would be one of those episodes where I'd love to hear. Because we're always looking to up our game yep. at our table, um, and we would love to share it with everybody else. Because this is, you know, the best way to kind of say this is the best experience with these tools. So uh, you can contact us at Level Up Your Gaming Podcast at gmail dot com or uh, facebook dot com slash Level Up Your Gaming. Um, also, take the podcast, give it to your friends. Uh, you know, subscribe to the podcast, uh, share it with. People who maybe are your mortal enemies, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Share it with your mortal enemies. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, 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 it does help. Or leave us a review on a podcast site. Um, and if, uh, you know, you find someone who doesn't have a phone or doesn't like to, to listen to podcasts, uh, but they like listening to YouTube, we are on YouTube, so. Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Um, I just like saying it. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for us this week. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, for Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everybody. Have a great week, everyone.